Welcome to the uh, Pathway Navigation a Career and Education Planning uh, webinar. And today we're going to have Grossmont College uh, share some of their story with us. And um, I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Javier Ayala, who's Dean of Career uh, and Workforce, uh, of Careers and Workforce at Grossmont College, and Renee Nasori, uh, who's the Career Services Supervisor. Um, there's a lot extra here. Career Center Student Employment Adult Reentry also at Grossmont College. Um, just a quick note about the agenda for today. Um, it's roughly divided into three sections. So roughly a third of the time we'll be um, hearing from uh, Renee and Javier about um, what is happening on their college campus. And if you were at the community of practice back in February, this should be an extension of what you heard, not necessarily a repeat of, of what the panel presentation was. And we have a little bit more time for that. Uh, we'll then spend a third of the time, the following second third, on a sort of a facilitated Q&A and discussion. So this will be your um, opportunity to um, ask questions, um, provide additional details about perhaps what you're doing on your own campuses. So we really want that to be interactive. And then the third uh, piece will be a reflection um, and, and sort of action, uh, talk, thinking through some action steps. And what we'd really like you to do during this webinar is sort of be active listeners um, and, and listening for what of what you're hearing from Renee and Javier might apply to you. What are some ideas that you might want to take away? So without further ado, I am going to turn the microphone over to Renee and Javier and um, listen, listen a little bit more to their story. So take it away. Great. Well, <clears throat> first I want to say thank you and, you know, and echo a thank you from Renee that she hasn't said yet, but she will say as well. Okay. Um, you know, <laughs> it's a great, great opportunity right now to, uh, to have these types of conversations because there's so much energy around uh, Pathways Navigation. You know, we saw in February that uh, all the good work that's being done region-wide in San Diego by the colleges. So this is a perfect next step is to, to share and uh, see, see where things go forward. Just a little background um, on our college, Grossmont College, we're part of a two college system. And so uh, our sister college, Cuyamaca College is part, so we're part of the Grossmont Cuyamaca Community College District. And we have about 19,000 students, and uh, and we're comprehensive, just like most colleges um, in San Diego. And uh, but we really have taken it ourselves to to do something new and unique when it comes to providing an option to students that normally don't get this option, which is the career exploration piece, the career education piece. Um, through strong workforce, has become more important um, the last couple of years, and this year especially, we're starting to see a lot of momentum around putting career education first and bringing lots of the funding streams. So uh, Renee and I will just quickly bounce around with these, some of these bullet points. Um, I'll turn it over her, to her to talk about the Exploring Major Workshops. And I'll talk a little bit about something unique that we uh, have been recently trying to implement around career exploration, which is using MZ. So take it away, Renee. Thank you, Javier. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, we are very excited to pilot our new Exploring Majors uh, as of this semester. Our career counselor is now facilitating a series of Exploring Majors workshops. And what that means is uh, we're inviting students who, um, all students, any students, whether or not they've declared a major or not, to come and engage in one of the workshops. Um, they're housed in the Career Center, and the idea is they will get uh, a glimpse, highlights of all of our programs here at Grossmont, Cuyamaca College, and uh, be able to connect with a career counselor. But in addition to that, uh, they can complete a career assessment, uh, which is through MZ Career Coach. Uh, the unique thing about that is students will have uh, a very engaging session with their peers, along with the career counselor and be able to schedule one-on-one -on -one appointments with that career counselor in the career center. So um, almost like a one-stop shop where you can you know, come learn about the programs, uh, there'll be some Q&A opportunity, 
uh, take a career assessment and then schedule an appointment to do the interpretation with the career counselor um, all in one setting. And then, um, you know, and that, and then also we will provide them with a handout of additional resources, um, career assessments uh, to complete to support them with their career and decision making. So um, that's something that we just piloted this semester, like I said, and we're working closely with um, our general counseling division, um, as well as our CTE and just all over the campus and, um, you know, going out to the classes, uh, you know, specifically counseling classes um, to support them, you know, with that resource. I think one, one common theme is with our career center. Our career center has really had a strong reputation um, for, for a while, but this last uh, three or four years under different leadership, and also because of strong workforce, we've been able to do a lot more strategic investment. So in terms of meeting, so we've gone from a little career center uh, uh, prior to the last three years to now a big career center approach. And what that means is that um, Career Center, all the programs, which would normally have been niche programs, due to strong workforce, are now uh, serving the whole college. So for example, the uh, Griffin Works Internship Program, um, that's a program that, uh, that, I, that uh, um, I learned about uh, in New York uh, when I used to work there, but we adopted it to Grossman College and now we have Griffin Works. So the whole idea is to, uh, initially the, the call to action was to respond to some of the, the needs uh, for our career programs to get, have our students get placed into careers a lot sooner and make better decisions and choosing careers from the, from the beginning. And now that program has grown and mushroom to serving the whole college. So from CTE career education uh, service uh, of students to now the whole college. So any program that, that in the college, it doesn't matter whether it's English or a different area is now, um, uh, eligible to participate in the Griffin Works program and you know we can spend a whole hour just talking about that but I just want to let you know that without the uh, strong workforce um, and all the work that's been done for pathways and onboarding and all the work groups in the region um, and having that inform what we do at Grossmont we would not have had that Griffin Works internship program so mm -hmm. um, other ways you know uh, we engage students um, are around the day in their life and Yes. Uh, Renee can talk a little bit more about that. So absolutely, we're very grateful to have the support of our, you know, CTE division, um, you know, Javier and Strong Workforce Funds. Uh, we've been able to uh, uh, hire a program coordinator to support with the internship piece and career advising and support uh, for, you know, really any student and preparing them for that counseling session um, and appointment. So we've been working very closely um, with our career ambassadors and career team to um, survey students and create really uh, engaging opportunities for them, uh, such as our Day in the Life series, uh, where uh, we invite guest speakers um, professionals within, you know, our campus, our faculty and instructors, our, um, you know, employers to come out in a very raw and formal fashion, uh, walk us through their path and their journey and their career path, and, you know, really uh, share, um, you know, the process for them. You know, what did that look like? What was their journey like? What were their struggles and, um, you know, uh, success now? And what are they doing, right? Um, and then students can connect with someone from outside um, or perhaps an instructor here about, you know, what that process looked like. So we um, offer several opportunities in several different fields um, and invite these guest speakers in the Career Center uh, for about an hour to speak about, you know, their uh, journey, their career path, and, um, you know, inspire others who are perhaps uh, undecided or changing majors and not sure where to begin. So that's just one opportunity. Um, you know, like I said, our career ambassadors uh, are ones that we rely heavily on. Um, they're the ones that connect with the peers, uh, you know, firsthand and explain everything that we offer in career services. We have a, a number of adult learners so through our adult reentry program, um, we house these pre-semester open house sessions to educate uh, perhaps prospective students 
who may have not stepped foot on campus ever to understand what you know college life is, how things work, um, you know, give them a tour of the campus, highlight our programs, our student services, and then have engaged faculty and student services um, in these sessions to uh, support them and highlight some student success stories. So I think probably a theme that you're picking up by now, um, without going into all these items uh, too much, because I know there's some prompts you want us to cover, um, but it's really we're, we're putting the career back in the career center, which is it's, it's kind of odd to say that, but really, you know, because most career centers have been doing career services, but um, what that means now under the umbrella of strong workforce is very different. It's got to be career services plus. And so with the plus, you know, we have career ambassadors, as Renee talked about. We have a, a college-wide uh, internship program being run out of that, uh, out of that location and the department. We have uh, outreach, community outreach being conducted there um, in a way that really allows individuals to also engage with the college. Mm -hmm. We have our career ambassadors also going to classes and doing presentations about different careers. Industry tours, we have we are we're starting to do that. Mm -hmm. It's one of something that something we're trying to inspire to where we could have some industry uh, tours that take place from Grossmont through a bus mm -hmm. uh, where they can visit certain manufacturers or different types of firms. That's something on the radar. We did a, a little pilot uh, a couple years ago. But I think that's something we definitely want to scale up more. Mm -hmm. um, the Job Readiness Training Academy, that's something that's, that uh, Renee picked up last mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. And that allows individuals to get uh, a host of different types of specialized training for soft skills. Mm -hmm. um, and then one more thing, um, you know, we're, we're trying to incorporate more of that data piece because a lot of the information um, that... Th that is available is not quite understood by students right away. So we're trying to make, create opportunities in the career center as well as the classrooms, um, different division meetings, different opportunities on campus, uh, our pathways convening group, our sub strong workforce pathways group, uh, and talking about data and how to use data so, student, so students can make a good choice. And uh, you know, to us, that's a call. That's an equity question. Mm -hmm. You know, students. It's hard for a student to have a, to make good calls on information and careers when they don't know what job opportunities are out there, what skills is available, what wages, who's retiring, um, and you know, and that information needs to be made accessible to families and parents as well, so they can get a better understanding. But there's a there's an equity piece there as well. We know that uh, lots of lots of students will continue on their career path if their parents support that. So we've got to make that information more uh, accessible uh, for parents who probably have never gone to college. Mm -hmm. That's a big call to action for us right now is making that accessible to families that really uh, don't see college as an option, not because it's scary, but also it's not, it's not easy to navigate and understand. So one piece that we're, we're about to kick off uh, in June is we're redesigning our website based on the Strong Workforce Regional uh, Group. Uh, we're going to do level one, level two web page designs where um, we, you know, we're, we're getting at, at the, the, the first impression website with the idea that we're going to roll out and do more granular levels type of uh, redesigns of the websites where it will have more accessible information to parents, uh, easier uh, information for students to navigate, um, and really uh, just, just provide that information so students can be good consumers um, and just make good choices, really just because in the absence of that information, um, they're, they're really not able to compare and see what, what their options really are. So, uh, so putting the career back in the career center, putting the career back into to Grossman College, that's really what, what we're trying to do here. And that's in partnership with student services, counseling, uh, student support services and you know a whole bunch of other uh, groups on campus um, because it's really going to take all of us coming together because every student really is a career student I mean that's that's the bottom line um, you know career is not career CTE it's every student is a career student so 
Well, thank you, Javier. And what I'd like to do is is proceed through and um, and then in the interest of time, because we really want to make sure that um, everyone has a chance to to engage and ask you some some questions. I think um, what I'd like to do is move to the next slide, and then after that, actually jump to the lessons learned slide. So here, you know, if you could just say a few words about um, you know sort of what what really informed. Um, you know, how, how you got to, to the various things that you're doing now with the Career Center. And then um, after that, we'll jump to the lessons learned and we'll open it up for, for questions after that. Mm -hmm. So I just want to add that we uh, definitely, when we started, we surveyed students, uh, faculty and employers to uh, gauge, you know, where the gaps were, what the needs were, um, where, where the interests uh, lied. And in doing so, you know, we've been able to create the activities and events that have taken place um, in partnership with CTE and make sure that students are getting supported in, uh, you know, the needs. And so, you know, the series of our uh, job readiness um, workshops, um, you know, those are based on the results of these surveys. Um, you know, it's, it's the, where the needs were from instructors, um, you know, things such as customer service, time management, those are all skill sets that students can apply starting at home and in the classroom as well as the workplace. So really tying that in um, and encouraging, you know, faculty to bring in their classes for a career services tour and, um, you know, presentation on our services. And if time permits, you know, we would highlight, you know, one of those uh, topics or uh, complete a career assessment. Um, but we've been able to create other opportunities around workforce for our students, including um, employer socials, um, you know, business mixers, where, um, you know, we support students in their field of study. So we're very intentional with inviting those departments specifically. Um, so administration of justice, for example, and inviting, you know, the, the department instructors and chairs and faculty and everyone involved along with um, their student body and inviting employers specifically in those fields um, to connect with them and, and make this a success for both parties. Mm -hmm. You know, one, you know, it says employer mixers as a source of data mm -hmm. that we've been, we started doing employer mixers a couple of years ago. And so these are events where we're, where certain groups of students that are about to graduate are paired up with employers that are wanting to hire them. Mm -hmm. And so it's not open to everybody, but let's say that the, the local restaurants or casinos or whatever employers want to hire our chefs, then we would reach out to those students about to graduate we would do the, the mixer with the hotels and casinos and hospitality types of uh, employers. And then what we realized, we need to start, start collecting more information about what's working. Mm -hmm. And one thing they told us, so we asked them, what, what would you like? And uh, so they told us, continue these mixers. These mixers are awesome. Uh, can, you know, provide more opportunities for us to, to do internships. Then we create a grid from works, more work-based learning opportunities. Um, and then tell us what kind of activities and events are taking place at Grossman College. That's when we came up with the calendar of events. But now, the, 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 for several years now, we've been collecting data, um, kind of getting a sense of what our employers and our backyard want. And so that's really kind of let, kind of led us in that path and, and figuring out what we do on a regular basis. Um, the work-based learning pathways navigation, that's like a gift from heaven because it seemed like to be timed so perfectly, mm -hmm. because we really kind of uh, reiterated and echoed what the employers are already telling us. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like uh, employer sharing and the alignment working out really well. Uh, it was really, really spot on. So I think uh, this coming year with both of those, um, it's gonna be amazing. And then also the professional development that's been happening this last uh, semester, where it's been like gone from zero to 60 in a very good way. Uh, those opportunities, I think, uh, have helped lots of our faculty get engaged with a lot more work-related, strong workforce and work-based learning and pathways navigation. Great. So um, then, like I said, I think it would be good, um, and we will make all these slides available to everyone, so you're not missing out. But I, I, again, I want to make sure 
that we get to sort of the more interactive part of, of the session. So um, Javier and, and Renee, if you would say a little bit about lessons learned, and then we'll open it up for a conversation with everyone here today. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's, we're always striving to work, you know, harder, obviously, and, and drawing more awareness around what we do. Um, you know, we've been having, uh, obviously, every semester, the um, traffic is growing, the student awareness, uh, faculty, staff. Um, but, you know, we're still asking for that support from not only in-house here on our campus, but also uh, the community. Um, you know, many of our workshops and events are free and open to the general public as well. Um, however, you know, they, they don't necessarily know or, um, you know, know how to promote it. Um, so it's definitely something, you know, we continue to work on to um, strongly promote and market. Um, and then obviously identifying, you know, tools to track a lot of these um, activities as we go along is something that like region wide uh, we're all struggling with um, and something that we're working and planning towards right now. So what I would add, uh, I know we wanna get to the uh, Q&A part, uh, which I'm looking forward to as well. I'm not trying to avoid it, just letting you know. But, uh, <laughs> but I do wanna talk a little bit more about uh, bullet point one. Mm -hmm. So you know, when it comes to bullet point one, we staffed off our our, our Griffin internship program, which has been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, but the next stage is to to bring more faculty on board. So we most recently we've had some uh, some new faculty come on board. that are going to uh, help with the work based learning piece. Mm -hmm. So that's you know going back to bullet point. You know that's a critical piece to have some points of contact that can help with work based learning. And then uh, as we continue to uh, work with counseling services and student services identifying key people that can kind of uh, uh, spearhead those pieces so they can we can do the intake the differentiated intake the differentiated uh, orientation the career planning and we're already having those conversations but i think in terms of the staffing piece that's yet to be there because we've got to identify uh, certain people we do have a full time well, a professor that's decided to join that work group um, which is going to be very exciting because that person has been our uh, a prior academic senate president in the past has got a lot of history with the college so we're looking to forward to having her on board the data assistance piece um so so you know we do need more more work and in, um, in tracking students we're we're looking uh, for a new customer relations management system mm -hmm. that's being tested it's called uh, crm and then uh to track students but also really um the data systems really are about providing so one big goal we have is to provide career education exploration to everybody. Now, I will tell you, uh, that's nearly impossible for 19,000 students, okay? So we have to use technology to do that. So, you know, we've been playing around with the idea of um, doing more of a massive rollout with MZ, Career Coach. Um, that's one of the slides. If, if you don't know, that's free. Uh, for California for a couple of years, and some colleges have uh, automatically adopted that as a system. It's uh, it's all big data-based, kind of, like they have like several hundred sources of data they pull from, but it's really student-friendly, it maps to the curriculum. The the marketing piece, hopefully with the web redesign, that'll come out more and be front and center. Our career ed, uh, dot, uh, career ed org website regionally has a lot of awesome information. It's a matter of getting the, those students that go there to the colleges, which is our next step, and having something that is uh, formidable at that like level at the colleges as, as well in terms of our information. So I, again, the lessons learned really are like things that we can uh, continue to work on more than lessons learned. Because you know, lessons learned to me says you learn them and whether you do something with them or not, it's not necessarily something that you, you're intending to in some cases, but you know, we, these are things we wanna continue working on um, as opposed to lessons learned. Well, thank you. Um, so how is what you're currently working on linked or, or fit with uh, the guided pathways efforts on your campus? Right, so Renee and I are both part of the guided pathways convening group. That's for, for the college. That's both for our vice presidents, all a good portion of the academic deans, if not all of them, uh, student services and you know, faculty, 
student services. Uh, so it's a pretty big group. I think it's close to 30 people, right? Yeah. Something like that. So a Noah's Ark with the best, parents. yeah, Noah's Ark with the best intentions, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and then, uh, so within that group, we have a career services task force group. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we also have a pathways onboarding group as well. Mm -hmm. So um, what, oh, so just, that's kind of the descriptive topology of it. But more specifically, when it comes to the guided pathways design, you know, a big part of it, 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 depending on which design you're talking about, if you look at the state chancellor's design piece, it would be the, the cross-functional teams. So that is a very strong cross-functional team. And so we can say, check, we've got that box done. Um, not done, but it's, it's something that's, that's there. Um, the other piece, uh, you know, we're talking about work-based learning opportunities. What does that look like? Uh, along with the internship is the job shadows, the day in the life. Um, so part of the state chancellor's rubric has the work-based learning opportunities. Mm -hmm. So in a bigger picture, um, all our work is really um, pillar one. So, you know, we have the pillars. So, you know, the first pillar is, you know, um, uh, clarify the path. So that's what we're working on with Pathways on Navigation. But we're also talking about entering the path, you know, getting those uh, career education plans. And we're also talking about um, uh, staying on the path uh, through learning communities and different meta majors, et cetera, uh, and then ensuring learning. And because we are a strong workforce, you know, getting people employed is part of that. And Grossman has their own flavor with the pillars, which is promoting the, promoting the path as well. So before you clarify, you promote it. So I don't know if you want to add anything else, Renee. Um, so I'm also on the Guided Pathways Mapping work group here on campus, and along with a few others from um, you know, across the campus. Uh, also, you know, um, DDL is really good about um, updating and sharing feedback from our strong workforce work groups uh, now with our Pathways uh, Navigation group. Uh, just to keep them, you know, up to date as far as, you know, um, our planning strategies here uh, to make sure everything is in line with our guided, guided pathways design. Great. Thank you. And I've, um, as you were talking, I noticed quite a few questions coming in through the chat. So um, I'll just work through these and also feel free anybody to unmute yourselves and, and ask the question directly if you'd like. But for now, I'll start with the chat. Uh, Patrick, uh, number of uh, full-time or part-time career counselors, are they faculty, number of career ambassadors? Mm -hmm. So we have one part-time career counselor right now um, that we share with Miramar. <laughs> and um, the career ambassadors, we have a, a group of uh, 15 um, part-time career ambassadors. Um, so yeah. I mean, there's a there's a lot of interest uh, in having more career counselors, mm -hmm. um, and uh, but uh, barring um, funding for that and the process that we need to follow with our shared governance process, um, what we're trying to do in place of that until we have um, some definitive markers to move forward on those positions mm -hmm. or that kind of uh, staffing arrangement, what we're trying to do is uh, embed career education across the college. Because it's, uh, it's, that's what's going to be needed for uh, seismic change as well as systemic change. It can be something you, it cannot be something you put on the shoulders of one or two people. Um, lots of the West Ed research has indicated that all the, the work on guided pathways it needs to be something that is adopted college wide for it to be successful. Great. Um, and then Scott asks. Um, uh, something to address at some point is related to the career coach assessment program. How do your students like this program? Well, Renee has shared it at the Career Center. My observation when I visited some of those um, events, but Renee can share more about mm -hmm. it, but I've noticed, um, at least from watching, we don't have a lot of empirical data assessing career coach yet, but uh, we have the... Uh, so far, nobody's walked out when it's been presented. Let's just put it that way. And it's actually a nice platform. Mm -hmm. um, but what the counselor meetings where we talked about it, uh, at least the counselors that I heard when we looked at different options, they seem very excited about that as a tool. Uh, Renee can talk more mm -hmm. about how students like it at this point. 
Yeah, so um, like I said, we've been inviting students to engage in the career coach. Um, you know, walk-ins are exploring majors or in the classroom. And um, students like it because it's a user-friendly tool. Um, you know, you have uh, two options. You could do a six-question um, assessment or you could do a 60 questions. And it typically takes, you know, no longer than 15 minutes to complete, even with 60 questions. And, um, you know, students will be able to see uh, the different professions, um, industry trends, um, and resources tied into their results uh, right after. Um, and then, you know, begin to have those many discussions with their peers, with the career counselor, um, with their instructor, and, you know, discuss further with the career counselor. So um, it's, it's really a seamless uh, assessment, I think, um, and the results are right there. So, uh, so far, we've had, you know, good response around it. Great, thank you. Um, and then Patrick, I totally understand about not having a mic, so I don't mind uh, reading your questions. Uh, Patrick asks, uh, do you work or plan to work with high schools? So we have in East County, we have uh, the East County, uh, the East County Education Alliance. Mm -hmm. It's been here for several years now, and it's a partnership that brings the high schools together as well as um, the colleges. Uh, primarily, uh, it's an apex group that allows the president, chancellor, superintendents to come together and set some goals for th through the ECA. Um, so we work with them regularly. Uh, one thing that, uh, you know, lots of our high schools in East County applied for the strong workforce component for K-12. So, and, and they solicited from the CTE deans um, buy-in. So we're very engaged with them. Um, lots of the things that we're talking about now, for the most part, they are, they are aware of. Uh, we have a middle college high school as well here that's part of the most my unit high school district. So students get, you know, they're sort of our little guinea pigs, for lack of a better word. They're high school students, so they get exposed to lots of what we're sharing now. Mm -hmm. um, so the reception is pretty well. I think, you know, we're, when it comes to sharing, to doing more of the high school piece that we're talking about, you know, we're, we're at, at a plan to wanting to scale as opposed to scaled at this point. So we want to scale it up. It's going to require uh, a, a lot more buy-in, a lot more uh, folks to weigh in and see. Uh, but I think, you know, in the end, it's probably not going to look very different from what we're talking about. I hope it doesn't. Primarily because what we're doing is based on research. You know, it's based on the research that many of you have seen and provided in the, the convening groups. And it's also really um, what's what's needed, you know, to to make an impact on career education, mm -hmm. unless something else comes up that's very different. And I just like to add, um, our district we take turns with hosting a counselors breakfast, um, so we can educate the counselors, um, you know, throughout about our programs and services, and you know, provide them with those resources to take right back to their campuses. Um, we also do have, you know, groups of classes coming through if the request is there. Um, outreach here on campus, do, they do a good job of uh, connecting them with us anytime there's a request around um, career services or career education. Uh, we will go out to the class as well if needed. And sometimes the high schools will want a specific tour. And, and this is just an example, one of our programs, uh, but culinary. Many of the students will want to, you know, from high school, want to see a culinary department or culinary chefs in action. So mm -hmm. they'll get that tour. They'll get the regular campus tour. But they're always, 99% of the time, going to get something related to career. Um, at least the last couple of years has been the case. So, um, again, we're at a plan to scale. Not necessarily something that's happening for everything. Uh, but it's definitely something that's on the radar for us more so than on the radar. We're actually doing it, so. Yeah, and uh, Patrick actually also added uh, that at Palomar, uh, Palomar has 25 high school groups visiting this semester. All students receive career assessment. Cool. Thank you for sharing that, Patrick. Um, let's see, Clarissa asks, uh, what is the buy-in from faculty across the board to allow the counselor and or ambassadors um, into classes? You know, they're all trained, they shadow, uh, myself or our program coordinator 
uh, before we send anyone out on their own. Um, some of them have uh, outreach or um, communications uh, background where um, you know, we feel confident. Um, they normally are uh, versed on what to say and take the material that's needed. Anything they cannot answer, they know not to answer um, and bring back to us and then we will follow up. What I've noticed is, uh, you know, we started small with those, those types of visits, mm -hmm. but I have noticed, at least in the career education um, division, more faculty reaching out to career services to get that type of uh, um, presentation, and mm -hmm. it's worked out really well. I know um, you regularly get reinvited, so that's usually a good indication. I want to keep that going. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, across the college, you know, this is still something new where, you know, I would say we're still working to, uh, you know, looking to scale it up. I know there's a lot of interest around career education. It's hard to avoid. It's part of the oxygen at this point. So, um, so yeah, I think, uh, you know, just, just like our Griffin works, it started in career education. Now it's a college wide uh, program, you know, over a period of time with enough of a track record, enough of uh, positive experiences, which what the faculty are getting. Um, I, I could, could, I could uh, foresee in the future being something that, that one, that we can actually answer that question, what is the buy-in from faculty across the board? Because right now um, we don't have that data. And you know, um, what we do have is uh, repeat faculty wanting to engage with the Career Center. Great. Um, and then we have another question uh, from Patrick. Uh, who trains career ambassadors and how long is the training? So um, I typically train our career ambassadors along with our program coordinator. Um, you know, our program coordinator is, uh, we recently completed the new world of work, uh, 21st century, um, you know, skills. And those are uh, new up-to-date, uh, you know, workshops and uh, resources that we're providing, you know, uh, campus-wide, but also starting with our career ambassadors. Uh, we also have a, uh, we developed a procedures binder as well. Uh, so we do a two-day full um, orientation uh, slash training. We do a lot of role plays as well between um, the peers and, uh, you know, sharing out the different activities and services. Um, so, and, and throughout the semester, we have ongoing, I'd like to call professional development as well, uh, weekly. So, mm -hmm. Um, sometimes we bring in a guest, uh, you know, professional during a team meeting and we'll do additional trainings. Um, and then we encourage that they all participate in our workshops as well. Um, you know, you've, you've started down the path of sort of career planning before education planning, but, you know, I'm wondering if you can elaborate a little bit more on what do you foresee are sort of the next steps in that area? Um, knowing that all the campuses are going to be grappling with, you know, how do you, how to integrate sort of that career planning before the the education uh, planning component I think uh, then you know it's so so early on mm -hmm. I think the next step so for us you know we're, we're according we have a meeting coming up to talk about um, what that looks like for us and I have a feeling that most colleges are also doing the same so our next step is really just to to discuss it and hopefully, maybe there's an opportunity for region for the, the region to to focus specifically on symposium for career planning before ed planning. That would be I know we you know we recently did that, but something specific to that part, I think you would get lots of counselor interest. And um, again, we're going into it uh, brand new with not a lot of expectations except for trying to figure out how to serve those students. Um, it would be a little bit too premature at this point to say what that looks like. I, I think both of us and the, the folks that we work with and the convening task force and counseling are hopeful to, to be able to provide uh, an opportunity for students to actually get the career education planning um, that they deserve so they can you know, achieve those outcomes that we're being asked for. Plus it's the right thing to do with the whole equity conversation we're having statewide. About strong workforce funding career center coordinator, career counselor, and ambassadors? Question mark. <laughs> definitely uh, on the, uh, you know, definitely on the uh, on the the list for sure. Definitely, but it requires some internal. You know, we love to have more 
strong workforce funded individuals in the career center mm -hmm. that uh, at least from my perspective as a person now I don't know necessarily what, whether everybody would agree but from my perspective I think that's a good thing and I'm open-minded to hearing that that's not necessarily the right thing to do but so far I haven't heard anything that says that this is probably not the right thing to do and I'm sure there's a lot more things to fund through strong workforce that we're not aware of so again you know as we have more regional conversations that will help inform what we collectively do. You know, I really love that the fact that regionally we come together with work-based learning, that, you know, 10 colleges and, you know, lots of personalities, all good personalities, of course, um, getting together and deciding that that's an important thing uh, and pathways navigation. Uh, so all those, those two streams of concert convergence really, um, lend themselves to doing some career center coordination funding for staff career counselor more ambassadors and other kinds of things so um you know how's it uh, how is it funded now um, as we mentioned we have a a strong workforce person that's paid for uh, to do griffin works so that person is primarily devoted to griffin works and um, doing some other things and uh you know, there's an opportunity to support counseling with some strong workforce as well. Uh, what that looks like uh, is something they're gonna have to process um, within their own division, but I'm fully supportive of it. I, um, lots of people that I've talked to um, are also supportive, and um, Renee, I'm sure, is supportive as well. She's not saying- Very much, supportive. <laughs> we are blessed over here. Very grateful. <laughs> All right, so we have about 10 minutes left, and so I'd like to, to move to our next section, which is really a more of a, a, a reflection time. And, um, and again, just you know, to, to open it up, we'd really like you to sort of think about, so you know, of what you heard you know, from Renee and, and Javier and, and, and then from some of the questions that, that were asked, um, you know, what are some of the strategies that, that, that really sort of resonate for you and that you might bring back to your campuses or to your pathway navigation teams to, to look, you know, to consider um, on your own campuses? Um, and, and what might you actually adapt? So kind of want to open that up, um, you know, for, for anyone to kind of respond to. Like, was there anything that really resonated that you're, you're interested in, in, in looking more closely at? What are some immediate actions or sort of next steps that you might take based on what you heard here today. Um, you know, it could be something as simple as going to the resource library to download something or going back to your team to, to tell them about some of the things you heard and that you want to explore some things. So just, you know, we want to get a sense of, of what really resonated and, and what you'd like to, to consider further. I can uh, speak, can everybody hear me okay? Yep, we can hear you, Scott. Okay, yeah, one thing that um, we want to do, just like how with um, Triple SP students have to have a you know, comprehensive student education plan on file, uh, what I would like to do for our students here is they also have a career action plan on file that um, you know, takes the students through questions related to how certain they are with their chosen major, but really what their chosen career is. And based on their level of, cert of certainty, they can continue on with the action plan, or they'll be prompted to go in for more career counseling, visit certain career exploration tools and assessments, and then, you know, again, talk it over with a counselor because you know we need to address all of these services to the online student and students who maybe would be unable to physically come into campus and so by having this career action plan uh, assigned maybe even in the ce classes or you know in personal development classes it could catch on i, I was wondering if anybody else is thinking about that a great idea. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, my name is Abdullah Shawi. I'm an instructor at Grossman College. I just want to share my immediate action. Um, I just sent an email to Renee to uh, invite the ambassador 
for my class. Thank and you. I would present um, some presentation at the Career Center because you guys are doing a whole great job. Um, I have one of my students give me a feedback about those workshop and uh, recommend to bring the, the entrepreneurial workshop to my class. So it's awesome. Thank you guys for a great job. Awesome. Thank you. That's the and, idea. And we did not pay Abdullah <laughs> to say that. That was totally a surprise. <laughs> That's great. Making connections. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and and um, um, Patrick did say that he likes the idea of ambassadors. And, um, and then Claudia, I don't necessarily want to put you on the spot, but I will anyway. Um, <laughs> Um, do you want to say anything about what you're doing at Mesa with with um, with ambassadors? Hi, everyone. Um, sure thing. So we also have embarked on on a journey with our career peer ambassadors. And uh, what we're doing with our career peer ambassadors is um, very similar and um, in what Renee and Javier have shared. Uh, but we are also using our career peer ambassadors uh, to do um, some of the outreach component with our outreach department. So they're going out to the middle schools for early career exploration engagement, and they're going out to the high schools. In addition to uh, there, there are primary source for resume reviews at our campus uh, uh, career center, which has expanded uh, our services um, in terms of our career counseling uh, reach because we we were, you know, a, a slightly limited in, in how many. Uh, students we could see in regards to the urgency that resume reviews have. So um, we've been able to utilize them that way. But our career peers, uh, we, we were fortunate, um, as Renee and Javier have mentioned, we were fortunate as well to have them uh, be on board through the help of regional strong workforce uh, funding as well. And Patrick is asking, uh, where is funding for ambassadors coming from now? So that's a combination of Perkins and Strong Workforce. Great. There are a few that have uh, that have been awarded federal work study as well on campus that um, will take them on. Okay, great. And I know Svetlana, you had another question. I know we're in the re reflection point, but we certainly don't want to keep people from continuing to ask questions. So Svetlana, I know you had a question. If this is a uh, brief, and it it may not be, but um you've talked about all the coordination that you've um, been able to do. I was just wondering if you actually uh, address those kinds of system issues uh, with counselors with regard to uh, when they sit down to do a mandatory education plan with the student and the student doesn't know what their career goals are. Do you, have you actually had a conversation with counselors about what happens then? Do you send them to the career, do the, does the counselor then send the student to the career center and make sure that, 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 that their career goals are clarified and then have them come back to the counseling office? In other words, what have you had any conversations that, about kind of changing the, mm -hmm. the trajectory, the, the regular process that would normally occur? So we, we have a career and general uh, counseling task force and our Dean of Counseling and our Chair are also very well connected uh, with all this work in identifying um, a counselor to support us in career services. We've had everything from undecided workshops to choosing your, you know, the right major workshop to now exploring majors workshops. Um, you know, they're not strongly attended and I think a lot of it is, um, you know, there are so many students to, uh, for counselors to connect with. Um, sometimes students may feel overwhelmed to, you know, engage in one more um, opportunity or workshop. Um, but, you know, this semester, I would say more than ever, uh, we have a dedicated, you know, uh, career counselor who's also, you know, meeting with those students who are undecided and also uh, supporting us with the facilitation of these exploring majors workshops. Um, so we're, you know, continuing to work closely with our general counseling, um, you know, our triple SP team, um, you know, and campus uh, wide to uh, promote these opportunities and resources so that, um, and the clarity behind it, the why, um, so that, you know, 
uh, faculty, counselors are, feel strongly when referring a student to us. And if I may add to what Renee just shared, I think what we have right now is promising activities. So we don't have like a promising practice yet that we can share, mm -hmm. but we have promising activities like with the, with the best intentions. Mm -hmm. And we don't have a, um, you mentioned the systemic piece. Um, we don't have that as a system yet. And a part of our conversation um, when we can be in here next week or two with the, with, with the Pathways Navigation Group is to really talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, today during our convening Pathways group for the whole college, that did come up. You know, what happens if an individual goes on CC, apply or web advisor or whatever application, you know, they're, they're unsure about what career path, what options do we have? What happens, you know, what, what happens if they can't find a counselor? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, have, using technology more than likely to answer, help, help facilitate the first step of that question, not necessarily answer it, but facilitate. In some cases, it could be answered, you know, because some of the students might not need that, that much of a wraparound support. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so that's something that system-wide, at least for us as a college, we're, we're starting to have a conversation about because um, we need to get everybody on board and we need to implement something that helps all our students. Because right now we have an awesome career center, but again, we're 19,000 students and several thousand students will go to the career center. Mm -hmm. So we need to figure out a way to touch every student and that requires systemic change, as you mentioned, which we're not there yet with. Great, thank you. So something else I noticed um, that we are getting more counselors uh, walking over students um, from general counseling and also, um, you know, specifically from our categorical programs. So our CalWORKs department, EOPS care programs, um, and, and making sure that handoff is, is strong. Um, something else that Javier supported our general counseling team. We had a handful of counselors last year complete the Myers-Briggs assessment and um, strong inventory as well. Um, so obviously uh, the counselors are um, trained in both career and general counseling um, and we're providing them and updating them you know, with various resources and tools so um, they're better prepared as they're meeting with students. Perfect, great. So we've come to the, the end of our hour. Uh, just wanna open it up for any last questions before we, we close out. Um, I see that Patrick has another comment. Uh, Palomar is looking to find ways to have students complete onboarding either with peer ambassadors or online before seeing a counselor for an academic plan. Cool. Yeah. That's great. A great, yeah, that's a great direction. Yeah. I well, want to first of all thank Javier and um, and Renee for um, you know joining us here today and sharing you know sort of their story and their journey um, in this area and really thanking all of you for for joining us and participating and, and asking some really good questions and also sharing what you're doing on your campus and then the last thing I'd like to sort of plug and share with you all there you know I've mentioned the resource library if you don't know about it. Um, um, it's at um, swp-library.myworkforceconnection, uh, and um, that's a library that we're helping to maintain and populate for you all, so um, feel free to go there and search for resources, and if you don't find what you're looking for, let us know and we'll um, locate it for you. I just want to thank you all for giving us the platform to, you know, exchange um, our resources here mm -hmm. with you all and, and learn from all of you. Right. Yes, definitely. Uh, what's uh, you know, it's hard. You, you learn from just talking about it. Yeah. You know, um, so it helped us kind of. We'll we'll have, we'll have things to think about and reflect on. So, and we're looking forward to um, giving Scott a hard time on April twenty fourth. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> but uh, the reference library, the resource library, is really great. So if you haven't checked it out, you should really look at it. It's so inclusive of everything outside of California as well. Great. Great. Thank you. Glad to hear that. Thank you so much.